Shalom and greetings, brothers and sisters and Master Yeshua the Messiah. Brother Nicholas James Vanderlein here. Today is the 19th day of the fourth month on Elohim's Enoch solar calendar, July 8th, 2020. And this video is being broadcasted from the country of Cyprus. This video is titled The False Gregorian Seven Day Week and The Lost Sabbath. The information contained in this video is true and will shatter one's understanding of the calendar and the Sabbath day. I am pro-Sabbath, and this video is made to edify the faith of the generation of the righteous who desire to worship Yahweh their Elohim in spirit and in truth. This video applies to all calendar types that use the Gregorian days of the week, Sunday through Saturday, and the Gregorian reoccurring seven-day week cycle. All calendar versions that use the Gregorian reoccurring seven-day week cycle have ignorantly accepted the Gregorian days of the week, Sunday through Saturday, as if they are Yahweh Elohim's true days of the week, number one through six, and the seventh day Sabbath. We have all been duped, and in this video, I will prove they are not. In addition to proving the Gregorian days of the week as false, I will also prove the correct and only way to calibrate Yahweh Elohim's true calendar, which is the Enoch Jubilee's Dead Sea Scroll solar calendar. As for the Enoch calendar, I was first exposed to a version of it back in 2015, and at the time I didn't accept it, the version as the version that I was exposed to in hindsight was inaccurately calibrated because it used the Gregorian reoccurring seven day week cycle. In early 2018, I was led back to the Enoch calendar, and later that year, the Spirit of Truth taught me how to correctly calibrate the calendar and restore it. I hope everyone tests the information in this video and revisits the fully restored version of the restored Enoch calendar which I publish. The False Gregorian Seven-Day Week Throughout history, various civilizations have had various day lengths of their weeks. The Egyptian calendar had their month, quote, divided into 10 day periods known as decans or decades, end quote, says Wikipedia. This means their week was a 10 day long week. The Mayans and the Aztecs had a five day week. The ancient Chinese calendar had a 10 day week. The Igbo had a four day week. The Roman prehistoric lunar calendar used an eight day week which is called a Nundinal cycle. Later reform, the Roman legendary 10-month calendar also used the eight-day week slash Nundinal cycle. After more reform, the Roman Republican calendar went to a nine-day week. And the final reform of the Roman calendar was made by Emperor Constantine, who, quote, formally established the seven-day week by making Sunday an official holiday in 321 CE. Constantine's reoccurring seven-day week cycle continued when Pope Gregory VIII reformed the calendar in October 1582, which is the Gregorian calendar the entire world uses today, which means the reoccurring seven-day week cycle of Sunday through Saturday that the world uses is that of Constantine from 321 CE. This means when Constantine established the seven-day week from a nine-day week, which was previously an eight-day week, Constantine had a one in seven chance of lining up the weekdays correctly to match Yahweh's Elohim's true weekdays. I will later prove the understanding of a continuous reoccurring seven-day cycle as incorrect. But for the sake of this argument, Constantine had a 14% chance of lining up Yahweh's true weekdays that year. The very big problem is there is no chain of evidence that he did so, or any evidence that whoever introduced the seven-day week cycle to Constantine did so. There is no chain of evidence that this is Yahweh's true weekdays 1 through 7. What I just shared has serious ramifications because it means the Sabbath has been lost, as hard as it sounds to believe. But before anyone dismisses me for this absurd sounding claim that the Sabbath is was lost, let me share with you that it was prophesied in the Book of Jubilees 
that Israel would lose track of the Sabbath. Jubilees chapter 6, 32, verse 38. And command thou the children of Israel that they observe the years according to this reckoning, 364 days. And these will constitute a complete year, and they will not disturb its time from its days and from its feasts, for everything will fall in them according to their testimony. And they will not leave out any day, nor disturb any feasts. But if they do neglect and do not observe them according to his commandment, then they will disturb all their seasons, and the years will be dislodged from this order. And they will disturb the seasons, and the years will be dislodged, and they will neglect their ordinances. And all the children of Israel will forget, and will not find the path of the years, and will forget the new months, Rosh Hodesh, not moons, and seasons, and Sabbaths, and they will go wrong as to all order of the years. For I know, and from henceforth, and I will declare it unto thee, and it is not of my own devising. For the book lies written before me, and on the heavenly tablets the division of days is ordained. Lest they forget the feasts of the covenant, Noah's covenant, and walk according to the feasts of the Gentiles, after their error and after their ignorance. For there will be those who will assuredly make observations of the moon, how it disturbs the seasons and comes in from year to year ten days too soon. For this reason, the years will come upon them when they will disturb the order and make an abominable day the day of testimony and an unclean day a feast day. And they will confound all the days, the holy with the unclean and the unclean day with the holy, for they will go wrong as to the months and Sabbaths and feasts and jubilees. For this reason I command and testify to thee that thou mayest testify to them. For after thy death thy children will disturb them, so that they will not make the year 364 days only. And for this reason they will go wrong as to the new months and seasons and Sabbaths and festivals. And they will eat all kinds of blood with all kinds of flesh. That last part is, again, part of Noah's covenant that we read about in Jubilees chapter 6. And I'll talk a little bit about that Noah's covenant in this video later on. So what you just read means the Sabbath is lost. The Sabbath day is the seventh day. So to lose track of the Sabbath means they lost track of the days of the week, just as I proved with the mess of the Roman calendar and now the Gregorian calendar days of the week that we've had for over 1,700 years. The Sabbath was lost well before Constantine. He just completely covered the paths for the Israelites going forward from 321 CE. And remember, he instituted that Sunday law. So the true calendar was given to the Israelites. The Sabbath was given to the Israelites, not the Jewish people. Not all people who claim to be Jewish are Israelites. Many of them are converts who have inherited lies. And it was the Israelites who lost the calendar. So I don't know for certain when the calendar was lost. My guess is it was completely lost somewhere between two to four generations after John the Revelator, I would imagine. I can speculate this in another video, but I also, want, I also know that the Bet Alpha Synagogue in Northern Israel has a floor mosaic of the calendar from around 500 CE. And that was a rendition of the synagogue floors from Zipporah, Galilee, which has, uh, which was around 400 in the 400 CE. And before that, there's another rendition of that floor mosaic calendar from the synagogue in Hamat Tiberias from 200 to 300 CE. So who knows if the congregations knew how to calibrate the calendar, as they well could have barely become just traditional decoration because the because it was lost. We don't know. But what we do know is now that Yahweh's Sabbath has been lost here on earth as the whole world uses Constantine's continuous seven-day week of Sunday through Saturday. The Sabbath also takes place in heaven. As the priests in Qumran were aware, there is a heavenly Sabbath worship service, hence the songs of the Sabbath sacrifice found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Master Yeshua the Messiah taught us to pray, asking Father Yah's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
I teach that this means here on earth we are supposed to sync up to the heavenly calendar to worship Yahweh Elohim on his true Sabbaths and his true new months and his true festivals. How do we sync up, you might ask? Jubilees 2.9 gives us the understanding how we here on earth are to sync up to Yahweh's heavenly calendar that is written on heavenly tablets. Jubilees chapter 2 verse 9. And Elohim appointed the sun to be a great sign on the earth for days and for Sabbaths and for months and for feasts and for years and for Sabbath of years and for jubilees and for all seasons of the years. This verse means the sun is the sole and only calibration tool for days and for Sabbaths and for months and for feasts and for years and for Sabbath of years and for jubilees and for all seasons of the years. And the great sign of the sun on the earth is when the sun casts its shadow on the earth during the day of the spring equinox. This means the spring equinox calibrates the entire calendar, including the days of the week, number one through six, and the seventh day Sabbath. So now you're wondering, how does the spring equinox calibrate the days of the week? The calendar rule that explains this is the sign of the spring equinox signals that the following day is the New Year's Day, the first day of the first month. And the first day of the year resets to or restarts as day number four of the week, which is the day the sun, moon, and stars were recreated were created and put in motion and time began. How do we know that the first day of the first month is the fourth day of the week? Because Jubilees gives us a pegged date for Shavuot as the 15th day of the third month, the Feast of Weeks. And we know from Leviticus that Shavuot is on the first day of the week. So all we have to do is count backward from the 15th day of the third month being the first day of the week. And when you do so, the first day of the first month is the fourth day of the week. Hallelujah! So here I am on my publicly shared Google spreadsheet of the official Enoch calendar 2019-2029. Here I am on the 15th day of the third month this year. The Gregorian equivalent was June 3rd, 2020. This is Shavuot Feast of Weeks, and Shavuot is pegged in Jubilees chapter 44, verse 4, to be the 15th day of the third month. And that date is also validated in the Temple Scroll of the Dead Sea Scrolls. This is blue because this is a feast day, and it's the first day of the week because it's the day after the Sabbath. Sabbaths on this spreadsheet are outlined in purple. So all you have to do is keep going back. Here's a Sabbath. Here's another Sabbath. Another Sabbath. Another Sabbath. Another Sabbath. All the way back. All the way back. As you're counting back from the 15th day of the third month. And that brings you to the first day of the first month. Which is the fourth day of the week. So if this be the Sabbath day right here. Then you have the sixth day the fifth day, and the fourth day. That's how you verify the first day of the week. And the first day of the first month, which resets to or restarts as the fourth day of the week, happens after the day of the spring equinox. So to conclude this video, in it I expose the false Gregorian calendar we have all been ignorant of. If anyone refutes the false Gregorian reoccurring seven-day week, then the burden of proof is on you to prove that it is true and provide the documentation that when it was established that Constantine and his advisors did so accurately after the calendar was previously a nine-day week and before that it was an eight-day week. I don't think you can, but the burden of proof is on you to prove it's true. This video proved the many false versions wrongly calibrated Enoch Dead Sea Scroll calendars that use the false Gregorian days of the week, i.e. that they calibrate their year to the closest Gregorian Wednesday before or after the spring equinox to start their calendar year, depending on the false version.
of the calendar. There's many publishers of false calendars out there. For those who do publish the calendar this way, five out of seven years, their calendar will not make it to the full 364 days as per Enoch and Jubilee's mandate. Instead, the spring equinox will cut off their calendar several days prematurely on those years and not make it to the full 364 days. More so than falling short of the 364 days, some years, those calendars every year have the incorrect day of the Sabbath and new months and feasts, except for one year out of seven. As I have taught, Yahweh Elohim's times are not governed by man's standards of times, and which is the Gregorian days of the week. And for one to understand and correctly calibrate Yahweh's true calendar, which is the Enoch Jubilee's Dead Sea Scroll solar calendar, one must remove all Gregorian standards of time, define all the calendar rules, correctly calibrate the calendar based off the sun, and then reapply the Gregorian standards to know the Gregorian day and date equivalents. As I said, there is only one method to calibrate the calendar, including the days of the week, and that is to use the spring equinox, which is the great sign of the sun on the earth, per Jubilees chapter 2, verse 9. And Elohim appointed the sun to be a great sign on the earth for days, and for Sabbaths, and for months, and for feasts, and for years, and for Sabbaths of years, and for Jubilees, and for all seasons of the years. It's the only way to calibrate the calendar. This video you watched provided the proof that all calendars that use the Gregorian reoccurring seven day week cycle as if they are true days are false. More so, this video you watched is the restored understanding of Yahweh Elohim's true times. All praise to the Father and the Son. Hallelujah. I hope you value the information in this video. And besides this video, for more understanding on the true and restored calendar that I publish, I recommend everyone watch my official Enoch calendar playlist where I explain other restored calendar concepts such as the 364 day calendar versus the 365 day solar cycle, the heavenly solar Sabbath, the missing 365th day and the cursed day of Job's birth, and many more other calendar truths. So please go ahead and test the information that I have provided in this video. And shalom to my brothers and sisters out there who keep the commandments of Elohim and have the testimony of Master Yeshua, the Messiah. Shalom to you.